say I've been getting tatted They say they like my thing, yeah I say that I'm flattered They ask me where I've been I say I've been getting tatted Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing some M54 videos because I've been thinking about it and obviously I've just, I've seen I've got a lot of M54 guys and E46 guys and I feel I need to put out these videos for these guys that have that because they're sitting around, I'm doing a lot of N52 software videos but I'm never doing no M54 videos. So today we're gonna to go over all the things you need to change on your BMW M54 engine before or after 100 k miles okay guys so the m54 engine so we're gonna go over the top 10 things as you guys know so let's start this one right now so the first thing that goes on these cars which is a priority thing i believe many people in the us including nathan believes that you do not need this clutch fan now in all the time i have driven m54 engines be it the x5 e46 e39 this fan has always worked now let me tell you something the pulse width modulated fan that fails on the e39s when i had my e39 the fan had failed now i was using the aircon driving it through the hot summer and only thanks to this fan right here my diesel stayed under temperature the whole time even in traffic when that pulse whip modulated fan stopped working this fan does do a lot the reason people like nathan remove it because as he said it costs a hundred dollars to replace it every year these cars do not come cheap they don't come with cheap maintenance so don't skimp out if you can't afford a hundred dollars on a part every year you shouldn't own this car either really i don't think that's expensive you guys saw i replaced the new fan clutch and the blades as well it's nothing to me i didn't care that's what you got to do when owning these cars you don't just get rid of it if you're meant to be an expert you would know that you don't get rid of the clutch fan the next one on these when the clutch fan comes off because these do like to fail then what happens is they just end up giving up and they don't call the engine is the thermostat and water pump now the clutch fan to take that off is hangs on to the water pump anyway so you better have to do the water pump thermostat down there they do fail and as you would have seen from my videos on this car this one was on nearly on 140k still on the same water pump and thermostat with still no issues but we changed it out anyway and this car has been solid i've taken it everywhere um, since we've been doing the last videos and i haven't had no issues so make sure you change that in the us you guys you know your water pump thermostat don't last that long along with all your coolant hoses as well so be aware of that that you're going to change it the next one on these that likes to go is the coolant reservoir now when i went and had the exhaust done because as you guys know as well from the videos the exhaust was blowing this i come back from the garage and this decided to crack and it let coolant out everywhere now i never did a video on that but it did crack and i did replace it because you don't know what that to happen luckily we wasn't going onto the highway motorway and just about to go on there with that like that thank the lord it happened while I was stationary outside the house and we saw it crack and I went and got a new one. The next one on these guys is the vanos seals and the valve cover. Now, as you guys know, the valve covers, these are prone to leaking on this car constantly and they will leak straight down onto the exhaust and leak everywhere. Uh, a lot of people in the UK end up selling them with that leaking. It's a common issue. Um, everyone just gets rid of them the moment they see them leaking. They can't bother to repair it because Gary just charge a fortune just to repair that valve cover for such a small job. The next one when the valve cover comes off is your vanos seals now the vanos seals do go at 100k and they will cause rough run especially in the cold time they also like to leak the oil through the seals which then in turn causes you to lose a lot of power so as i said if you're going to take the valve cover off you better have to get the whole kit which you can buy for the vanos rebuild kit which you then can do the valve cover gasket and the vanos seals at the same time it's a very easy job i've got the videos up showing you guys how to do that as well so like i say i will link them in the video here so you guys can go and watch them if you haven't seen them already the next one on these guys is the o2 sensors now this car had two out and i went and replaced them now in the us you guys try and 
delete them because you don't like them and you find them expensive but I didn't I paid for two rear ones 60 pound genuine ones as well Bosch ones may I say Bosch for the rears the fronts ain't gone yet but I replaced them because I don't believe in deleting it and trying to be that cheap on the car there's no point trying to skimp out on this car because it's a good engine and to make it reliable and run correct there's no skimping out you know I say all the time don't use cheap parts on these cars you know I just don't agree with it full stop the next one is your crankcase ventilation now as you guys know that was a flipping nightmare to replace as it was be aware of that they do fail and they start leaking oil from underneath the hose is cracked from the heat cycles of the engine constantly the other one going back to the return pipe the return pipe gets clogged you need to replace the o-ring on the dipstick tube as well when you take that out and they are a complete pitter to do like I said, if I was to do this again, I'll do it without removing the manifold. It was an absolute nightmare and it's something I wouldn't do again. They do start to crack all around here and you can usually see underneath with a light that they all cracked and got oil everywhere like this one did and I changed it. So just make sure you do that as well. The next one on these is the disavalve. Now, as you guys know, you can check these by taking them off, but they're a common failure point. And when they fail, they end up rattling around inside the manifold. The flap can become loose. They use vac they're vacuum operated, not electronically controlled like the M52 in engine so these are vacuum operated and what ends up happening is these end up flapping about coming loose going in your manifold and then you end up with low down power and your idles all over the place as well because of this disaffect because this controls the torque curve for the runners in the manifold so you've got to make, uh, make sure this is actually working to be able to get full power out of your m54 engine the next one guys is the intake boot which goes onto the idle control valve now as you guys know that likes to split on the elbow i did replace that as well when we replaced everything else on this car for a new one a february party was not expensive at all it was only 15 pound i ended up replacing that and it's made the car run a lot better because when i bought it someone had gaffer taped it so we had to get that gone immediately that was not even for negotiation as soon as i saw that the idle control valve was not stuck closed when i took it off which was another good thing trusted it all fine so it, that worked perfectly so they end up leaking and they can cause rough running leaks and also air leaks so be aware of that that if you're coming to buy one of these make sure you check that elbow because it usually always cracks and it can be a reason why you're getting a load of air leaks before you try and think of taking your, this this off to go and do the ccv because trust me that's a lot easier to change than that I'll take my word on that just trust me check everywhere before you do the ccv system but usually if you have bought the car and it's low mileage and it's never been done it's gonna need doing fact the next one on these guys is going to be all your vacuum lines which run under the manifold as well now they get perished and corroded and break off just like these ones did right here and i had to replace it as you can see i replaced all the vacuum lines going to the t-piece here i had to buy a new t-piece as well because they were so seized on on the air intake boot that i had to replace them this one especially broke off that goes to the fuel purge valve on the fuel pressure regulator so be aware of that it runs back down under the floor it's not hard to get to you just got to drop a panel and connect it back up but i had to replace it all it's on a, like a little metal line so when you take that off be aware that that it needs to be replaced as well and they can break this hoe comes off quite easily to get them back on just use a bit of uh, lubricant and they just should slide back on with no issues the next one i want to speak about is this right here the biggest problem in the usa and a lot of cars is this the math sensor a lot of people end up with a lot of rough running codes their car stalling the car not starting all because of this thing right here there's a common common failure point i know in the usa we ain't don't really see it much here in the uk but i know you guys end up with them failing and you end up going through loads of them and i have no idea why but this one touch wood is still okay and i'm very proud of it like i said this car's been doing extremely well since i've sorted it all and i'm very very proud of the outcome of this car like i said that's why it's still with me um because like i say it's on 160k now we did everything on 153 i believe and the car's still running strong no oil loss no nothing you know the oil is still good to this day as you see there and still clean and despite all the mileage i've put on it but you know the next one on this guys is the oil filter housing gasket that seems to leak a lot in the usa i haven't noticed it here and when i took the manifold off the oil filter housing gasket wasn't leaking but they do leak and you know realistically if they do it's not a hard job to go and replace yourself like i said if you're going to take the manifold off you better have to do everything while you're under the same with the coolant pipes that sit underneath the manifold as well as the vacuum lines just get yourself a roll of vacuum line and everything else that you want to be doing while you get that manifold off so you can overhaul everything while you're in there the next one guys is the ignition coils now as a lot of you are aware ignition coils on these engines m52 m52 like to fail a lot the ignition coils is just end up giving up 
nobody knows why they just go through ignition coils like anything and especially if your ccv is blown and it's having to burn off oil because you're making ignition coils i'm going to work harder to burn off that excess oil that's inside the chamber to clear the chambers for the fuel so in that essence if they do go your car will be misfiring you'll feel the power low down as well badly your sometimes your car might not start if they're not running as well so you've got to be aware of that and if you scan it and you get any of the p0301 up to p0306 all six cylinders could be misfiring so just make sure you check them because that's another thing and if you want to check them change them around put them on another cylinder and see if it changes if it changes you know that ignition coil is bad as i say to everybody don't replace just the one replace all six because it's crucial to maintain these cars properly the next one on this guys is the camshaft sensors and the crankshaft sensor now they are a common common fault on this engine and when they fail they can cause your car to stall out the light for your idles to go up and down all over the place and go absolutely mental when they're failing because it's sending the dme the wrong signals so in turn they all respond together with the math the sensors all the sensors on the car respond back to each other so the math then thinks it's injecting too much air so then what he's trying to do is cut the car out then it's trying to overfuel so it's sending all mixed signals and then your car ends up stalling out or sometimes not even back restarting so it's another problem that does exist on this car camshaft sensors and crankshaft sensors that you will need to replace if you're getting any kind of stalling issues now the crankshaft sensor again is around the back there which goes onto the back of the gearbox on the bell housing to the engine which it measures the crankshaft position for starting the car up and also for the starter motor so you've got to remember if that if you're getting no crank no start that will be your crankshaft sensor so make sure you go and change that now guys when i said about the throttle body boots be aware if i was you i would change them both now i couldn't find this other one and i don't know why that was but i did change the other one going to the idle control valve so that's why i end up changing that one out on its own now the idle control valve is the next issue now the idle control valve if that's sticking that can cause a lot of problems for your idle to be going all over the place for you not to even be able to accelerate for your car to be cutting out when you step on the accelerator as well so like i said take it off and clean it it's not a hard job to take off to clean it it's something i strongly advise doing like like I said guys, guys this engine isn't a hard engine to maintain it's a lot easier in the E39 I assure you of that and it's a lot easier on the X5 as well on the E53s it's a lot easier on them than it is on this car trust me on that like I said this engine does have its issues but all in all you can rectify all the issues on this engine yourself bear in mind yourself don't include labor costs on this engine for around four or five hundred pounds you can get every part you need to replace on this car which is very very cheap for what you're getting in this car this engine is a beautiful engine i love the sound of it it's silky smooth still to this day and it changes gears perfectly it drives perfectly you know it's one of the best six cylinder engines ever produced and like i said do not be put off if you're planning to take it to a garage it is going to cost you a fortune or labor it is not worth your time even buying a car like this but if you're planning to put the work in yourself it can make a great car and a great engine okay guys so as you would have just seen there i've just gone over all the items i feel that need to be replaced on the m54 engine at 100k or just after 100k now that's not to say that these items will not fail before that it depends on your climate in your country and where you are obviously here in the uk all these items are still on the car 150k so you can see all the original dealer items are still on this car but i overhauled the whole engine luckily it got to me before it went to someone else because it would have gone into the wrong hands again the other person would have carried on driving in this engine would be in probably in the scrapyard now so thank god i've rescued it and restored the car and these are the items that i'm trying to get you guys to restore immediately before yours ends up the same way let's try and keep these cars on the road they're going to be future classics let's try and maintain them best we can and if i can help you maintain them and tell you the parts that need replacing hopefully your car will last another another lifetime so i hope you've enjoyed this video guys thank you very much for watching this is bmw dr dean here and goodbye